to be joined by my old partner, Billy Starks, is joining Hi, us. Hi, Brian. How are you? How are you? I'm sorry for all the times I let you down. Mm. I know. It's been one too many. I think it was literally every time. But, uh, <laughs> I, what you're known for. I guess things happen. But mm -hmm. listen, we're here for something much more important, which is the Revolver Women's Grand Prix, which is this Sunday. It is at the Calumet Center in Dayton, Ohio. If you'd like to get tickets, there's a meet and greet at 1.30. Doors open at 2. The show starts at 3. It's actually a doubleheader because the Women's Grand Prix is at 3. And at 8 o'clock, it is the Revolver Redemption Show, John Moxley versus Gringo Loco. Both shows, you can either attend live or you can watch on Fight.tv. And uh, Billy Starks, Marina Shafir, Vert Vixen, Trisha Dora, Allison Cage, Anai Kai, Rachel Armstrong, and Emmy Sakura, all in the tournament. And uh, Billy, what are your thoughts on this Grand Prix Sunday? I think it's a great representation of women wrestlers. It's the best of the best that they could get. And I'm going to be honest, I see my biggest competition being Shafir coming with her background, but... This is my place. This is Revolver. I've been here way longer than she has, and I know I run the show. And first round, I got Rachel Armstrong, and I think very, very highly of her. Um, but she's still new. She doesn't know what I am. <laughs> she hasn't got there yet. You know, you mentioned that you'd been around for a long time, and uh, for those that don't, uh, don't know, uh, you just graduated uh, a few months ago correct yeah i was class of 2023 anyone else just feel hideously old <laughs> the class yeah. of 2023 but uh you know i got two questions on that first off i think when i when i first met you it was like two years ago and you'd been wrestling for four years was that correct have you been doing this now uh, six years or what are we talking about so i started at 13 and i am now 18 and i'm turning 19 in december so yeah <laughs> About six years now. Six years. So you're you're a female Nick Wayne, basically. Yes. Is what's <laughs> happening here. Now Nick is, uh, you know, he graduated. He got his contract when he was 16. He signed with with AEW. So he's doing that full time. What uh, are are you are you going to college now, or are you also now doing this full time? Um, I'm doing wrestling full time, and I'm also going to college. I'm going to college online. Um, got a really great scholarship and everything's paid for, so might as well go. So, so I, I, I didn't know exactly, like for Nick, you know, and you as well, like in high school, it's like you have to go to high school five days a week and then you're out wrestling on the weekends. And so, you know, I haven't actually asked him about this, but what a change it is to no longer have high school. It's like, what is this kid doing all the time? Like, he's got the it's one or two days very, a week. Very strange. <laughs> yeah, like, is it weird for you to have all this free time now? Um. Yes, I will say I have so much free time that I don't know what to do with. Um, but I also like having more freedom, and I'm able to, like, go have more fun, basically. I don't have a such strict schedule that I did when I was doing school, a real job, and wrestling. <laughs> So what is your your status with uh, AEW, Ring of Honor? Are you are you on a per date? Are you signed? I know you're doing a lot of stuff with Ring of Honor, and you were at uh, Wrestle Dream on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a signed talent at AEW. Wow. How was Wrestle Dream? Uh, it was amazing. I'm glad I got to be with my mentor, the bread man, and Keith Lee. Had a really great team, and uh, I honestly was really, really excited to be facing our opponents. I got to see Lee Moriarty across the ring again, um, who's a really good friend of mine, so it was exciting to see him get beat up. So you had a match at Defy uh, a few months ago, and it was with Bert Vixen, by the way, who was in this tournament. And, uh, and I was there, and man, I thought this match was awesome. And then when it was over, you mentioned that you guys had actually never been in the ring before. That was the first time that you had ever wrestled each other. And you guys looked like you'd wrestled multiple times. So tell us a little bit about that match. Have you wrestled her since? Uh, presumably in this tournament it could happen again. But uh, what are your thoughts on Vert Vixen? Um, I think Vert is an amazing wrestler. We still have not gotten a step in the ring 
with each other again. It's been one match, and it was only at Defy. So if you ever want to see it, go check out Defy. Um, but me and Vert, I feel like, just pair very, very well together. Um, I think we're both very, very ambitious and want to succeed at the end of the day. Um, but I think she should be so much further in wrestling. She deserves so much more. Uh, but I don't think this tournament is going to be that more. You've had probably more experience uh, than people three times your age with some of the things and some of the places you've been able to go. You wrestled already this year. You wrestled Yamashita twice, including once in England. You wrestled Hayashita. I mean, you've had such these great opportunities to wrestle some of the best women in the world. What have you been able to glean from some of these experiences with somebody like an Utami or somebody like a Miyu the, uh, crossing paths with them? I think you learn from everybody you wrestle. Everybody has their own little things that they do. Um, and being able to wrestle Joshi women and being able to tour Japan, I learned a lot about that style and that way of wrestling. Um, but even here in the States, you wrestle different girls every single weekend and you learn something new because every wrestler is different. Um, but I feel like from my experiences, it just helps you grow from a wrestler. The more you wrestle others, you learn how others wrestle and the more likely you are to respond to that. Do you, do you like the travel as far as going to Japan? And obviously it had, it may have been a thrill for you. I'm not sure how much Japanese wrestling that you watched growing up or anything like that, but how was the travel for you going out there and going to these places? Um, I have like a love hate relationship with travel. I love traveling to get to the places and see amazing things. Uh, but being on an airplane sometimes is not fun. Uh, sometimes the person in the middle seat sucks and has their elbows all the way out, stabbing you in the ah, side for the worst. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had some rough uh, airplane rides, but for the most part, I think it's worth it in the end because I get to go see amazing things. You mentioned uh, Japan and the bread man, Satoshi Kojima. And uh, for those of you that have been around for a while, Satoshi Kojima won the Triple Crown when Billy was one. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, you, we That's talked what happened. About it. Yeah, Adam and I <laughs> talked about it on a podcast, believe it or not. That one. Before they were podcasts. Yes. This is crazy. Now, looking at all of the other names in this tournament, I mean, uh, you know, we mentioned Vert, and uh, you've had one match with her. Uh, is there, I guess, who have you wrestled before? Who have you not? And uh, aside from Marina, like, who are you looking forward to? So I've wrestled Emmy. I've wrestled Vert. I've wrestled Rachel. I've wrestled Trish. I think I've almost wrestled everybody in this tournament. <laughs> um, but I feel like any of the matchups I'd be put into would be so much fun because all these women are phenomenal wrestlers. The thing is, I just think I'm better than all of them. <laughs> well, I guess that's the point of this tournament now, isn't it? We're going to find Damn out. Right. <laughs> now, you mentioned starting at 13. How did that happen? Um, just being a huge wrestling fan, and I got really, really lucky that I ran into Madman Pondo because I was doing wrestling photography at a girl fight show, and he introduced me to Too Tough Tony, who ran a training school, and then I started training. You know, years. You actually were probably zero when this happened. I uh, interviewed Low Key. And at the time, I really didn't know a whole lot about uh, Homicide. This, this was literally like 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, Loki was great. And I, I was like, who trained you? And he goes, uh, Homicide! And I was like, what? You were trained by Homicide. And, of course, later I find out that Homicide's awesome. And uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you mentioned Madman Pondo. That, <laughs> that would not have been who I would have thought when asking you, how what was your first break into wrestling training and such? Yeah, it was good old Madman Pondo. Uh, I call him Pinto Bean now, and he's the one who takes care of us when we're in Indiana. We'll come hang out. He always wants to go see horror movies with everybody. I'm stunned. Um, he's just a sweet old man that's all beat up now. <laughs> so 
what did your what did your parents think? I mean, are they fans? Were they like, oh my god, man, she's gonna get you know into this so, wrestling thing at thirteen? <laughs> my mom was definitely never a fan of wrestling. Just put up with it because me and my dad liked it. Um, but my dad was the whole reason I was talking to Pondo or would ever meet him because he loved wrestling and was is Mouse the wrestling photographer. So I feel like my end to most wrestling places was Mouse. <laughs> so how, I mean, your father now, I mean, we always see like Nick's mom. She's all over the place. But uh, what does your father think of, of what has happened here? Is he proud? Does he go to shows? Um, Mouse has been going to shows. He's just been a little bit busy uh, doing real life stuff, but he's been popping up at shows. He keeps shooting AW shows from like hard cam so he can come and watch me and also do photography at the same time because love Mouse to death, but he can't sit through like eight hours of wrestling anymore. He can do yeah. like an hour and then he's like, okay, I tap out. <laughs> well, it's tough. Uh, what can you tell us about your feud with Athena, Ring of Honor? How are you enjoying that? Not a feud, actually. Uh, you're, you're, uh, um, what would you call it? Whatever the opposite of a young boy My is. My overlord. She just showed yes. me around. Uh, the best way I could describe her is my mentor. Mentor. Uh, Thank but you. she would prefer minion overlord, so I'll keep with the, the shenanigans. <laughs> sure. Who is your actual mentor? If you had to pick somebody and say that, like, man, from day one, you know, in and out, this person has been there, and, and uh, do you have a person that you would call a mentor, an actual mentor? Um, I would say Trip Cassidy. He was one of those people who was, like, always there for me in the beginning, and he could just, like, look at people and be like, oh, you should do this, and it would somehow work. <laughs> you know, we uh, were at a show that my buddy Ed promoted a few years ago, and uh, I think you might have been maybe 16 or something like that. But it was notable because you were already bitter and grizzled. And uh, <laughs> has has that changed over the last couple of years now that you're working for uh, AEW and don't have all of the school stuff and et cetera? Um, I think I'm a pretty happy person, but it's easy to get me grumpy. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this, blah, 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 blah. But ever since being with AEW, I've had nothing but fun. Um, and even though Athena has treated me like crap the last couple of weeks, I think it's for the good of things, I guess. It's tough love is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I guess you tough can love. say that. <laughs> what, uh, what has really changed for you in terms of, obviously as a fan, you know, when you're a fan, especially a, a young fan, you know, you see wrestling a certain way and then you get into wrestling and then you're 16 and bitter because it's very different than what you thought. But then here you are signed to AEW. How have your feelings of wrestling changed since you first broke in? Um, I never would say I was bitter about wrestling because I always have had a love for wrestling. It's the one escape from real life that has always made me happy. Uh, I will just say the shenanigans of wrestling sometimes <laughs> doesn't make me happy. But since being with AEW, I've had phenomenal matches. I've gotten to meet phenomenal people. And I truly feel like I'm progressing in my career. Um, and being around so many talented people, I feel like I have so much to learn. All right, stand by. We'll be back in a moment. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Billy Starks joining us. This coming Sunday, October 8th, it is the Revolver Women's Grand Prix, the Calumet Center in Dayton, Ohio. There is a meet and greet at 1.30. Doors are open at 2. The show starts at 3. It is a doubleheader. There is the Women's Grand Prix at 3. And at 8 o'clock, it is Revolver Redemption. John Moxley versus Gringo Loco. You can get tickets and show up live. Or you can watch on Fight TV. And uh, Billy, of course, in the tournament, along with Marina, Vert Vixen, Trisha Dore, Allison Cage, and I, Kai, Rachel Armstrong, and Emmy Sakura, eight women. And there's some non-tournament matches as well, including uh, Killer Kelly, oh man, and Jordan Grace. So uh, before we go, let's get some plugs in for your stuff, Billy, social media, etc. Um, all of my social media is at Billy Starks, B-I-L-L-I-E, and then Starks is S-T-A-R-K-C. 
Yeah, she makes sure to spell it because uh, some idiot here on this show actually did a tweet once and spelled it two different ways in a single tweet. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I managed to pull that one off. But anyway, uh, hey, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show here today, and best of luck with the tournament and also uh, Ring of Honor slash AEW. And uh, the tournament, as noted, is this coming Sunday. And uh, tomorrow, Rene Paquette is going to join us, so that should be a lot of fun as well. So uh, best of luck, Billy. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Sick. Can't wait. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a... Commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.